Uh, let's explore this further. Let's speak to Dahlia Farmi. She's an associate professor of political science at Long Island University, joins us from New Jersey via Skype. Dahlia Farmi, welcome to the program. How do you read you what's me. going on here? This is really a reflective of the domestic internal rift and the wording of the former crown prince about corruption really is reflective of what's been happening economically in Jordan. You know, this king, uh, King Abdullah, has been running or talking about economic reform. It's not really political reform since he took office. And when you have a country that's hurting economically, it becomes a point where um, opposition forces or opposition within the government can rise and say, we haven't had political reform, especially since the Arab Spring. The economic reforms are failing. Today, for example, Jordan's foreign debt has, has reached $35 billion. It's 90 percent, 95 percent of the country's GDP. And so what that does is it lends itself to several challenges in the pandemic era, increasing refugee crisis. Um, the king had to um, implement some austerity measures. So the country's been economically hurting, which has put him in the kind of crosshairs of many opposition forces inside, um, inside the court who see him as failing compared to his father. Uh, Prince Hamza denies any wrongdoing. It, clearly, the royal court think otherwise. Well, what he did was meet, and uh, he referenced this in his uh, video, he met with um, members of uh, tribal elders or tribal leaders, and they um, voiced their uh, dissent. And so him being in that presence signaled that there could be a rising internal rift, but really a threat. Remember, he's the former crown prince. Um, the former, uh, the late King uh, Hussein wanted him to be the crown prince, and it was King Abdullah who removed him. And so there is, especially in this time of austerity, a comparison, and it seems that uh, former crown prince Hamza sees himself as the natural um, leader. Uh, hearkening back to a time of his father. Where could this lead? Uh, what are the dangers of what's happening here? Um, this is probably not going to lead anywhere, but what the king has to do is probably raise some of the austerity measures. He, it's going to be very difficult because these are the conditions the IMF has placed on him to reduce um, that debt-to-GDP ratio in order for the IMF loans to continue. So domestically, it's, it's going to be a tough time for the king. In terms of international relations and where he stands in the region, there probably won't be any changes. He's still held favorably uh, in the United States and in the UK. Um, he's a long-term ally. He, uh, Jordan shares a very long border with, with Israel. Um, and so there might not be any change in status quo internationally. This is really a domestic rift. Right. I was going to say that the regional leaders have been quick to express solidarity with King Abdullah. Are there those nations who may be uh, less willing to stand alongside Jordan if the circumstances were right or changed? Well, the interesting thing is that although Amman is very vital to Israel's interest and its uh, cornerstone, you know, Jordan is the custodian of, of East Jerusalem um, and shares a 335-kilometer border with Israel, um, the West Bank, essentially, the king's relationship with Netanyahu has been strained. And so the silence coming from Israel is, is quite telling. Um, it does not mean that they would want someone uh, aside from, from King Abdullah. Allah, but the silence is quite telling. And it just is emblematic of the rift. For example, just this past week, we saw um, Prime Minister Netanyahu uh, refuse to approve the supply of water to Jordan. You saw the tit for tat over airspace of the king was not allowed to go to Jerusalem. And then the next day, they refused to allow um, Netanyahu to fly to the UAE, his helicopter over Jordan. So it's been a very strained relationship for the past couple of years. It does not mean that it'll change relations, but let's see what happens in Israel um, looking at what's happening in Jordan. Uh, Dalia Fahmi, great to get your perspective. Do appreciate that. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you.